partly due to their coaches versus cancer participation. We'll talk more about that as we go along here today. Both teams involved in that cause as well. Klingon wins the opening tip. We're underway in Hartford. And you know UConn, they're going to start the game by playing through the paint, getting great ball movement, getting some reversals. And when they get those reversals, they open up driving angles and they can get Klingon established early and often. Ron Castle, the freshman, crossover, flashing through the lane, picks up his dribble, it's knocked out of his hands, and will stay with the Husky. Sean Miller's Musketeers, but it just feels like they're they're close, right? They're, they're right at the margins is where this team just needs to get a little bit better in every facet, right? Rebounding and scoring a ton. Yeah, well, uh, before in the last game, a great pass there by Castle and a nice cut by Caravan, who was one of the best cutters in the Big East, always finding the open space and Again, UConn playing through the paint. Xavier team at 10 and 9 on the season. This skips off the rim. 4 and 4 in the Big East. They started Big East play 1 and 3. Their season was kind of teetering, but they pulled it together to win three of their last four coming in. That was halfway down from Castle. Well, Xavier is a team that's not very experienced, and that has hurt them, but they've got three core guys as UConn is clearly focus on pounding that paint but you know Xavier they don't have a lot of depth but they've got three really good core players and this man right here Claude is the main guy a sophomore who made a big jump they do lack a little bit of size underneath second chance opportunity for Usman well, you see the rim protection and the impact that Klingon brings to this team and he's just a threat to block everything and alter shots Big East player of the week I just don't think Tristan Newton gets enough credit nationally this is a big-time player the point guard that controls tempo, makes the plays when they need him, and at his size, he can make tough shots at any time in the game. Knocked out of bounds. This goes to the Huskies. Xavier only turned it over five times against Creighton, but that still wasn't enough. And Caravan, such a heady player, just knows where to go with nice cut, and he just loses his man, Claude, tried to go over the top, and... Caravan just kind of goes right behind the defense and sneaks back door for a layup. Xavier playing man to man. They're going to try to pressure the ball and protect the paint at the same time. And gets to the pass. Look out! Klingon says hello. Oh, that was perfectly executed. The screen and roll, and Tristan Newton put that ball where nobody else could get it but the big man for the easy one. 6-0 start for UConn. Defensively, UConn is so good because they, they don't get beat off the dribble. And Xavier is out of sync right now because of the ball pressure and the pesty defense on the, on the wing. And this great lob execution right here. Tristan Newton knows where to put the ball in. Klingon is a very good roller. He's got great hands. And early on, you got to be encouraged with Klingon getting his first start after a couple weeks being out with the foot injury. Well, and this week especially, you mentioned that Utah hadn't played since last Saturday. Just getting him a chance to get in the gym, put some weight back on. He had lost 10 pounds because he couldn't work out much. Castle on the drive. He's rejected by Usman with a call foul. Dan Hurley, of course, the, the Huskies who won seven in a row to begin the season. They're riding another seven-game winning streak entering today. This team just has so many different ways they can beat you. Well, he's a phenomenal coach, and he's the best coach in the conference. And not just because he won the national championship last year, but the consistency and the way he's adapted with the new team. He lost a couple guys to the NBA, and, you know, Andre Jackson and Jordan Hawkins and Sonogo. So how do you regroup? How do you come back for a second year and duplicate that success? And I think early on at this point of the year, it wouldn't surprise me if they repeat. They have all the pieces, and offensively, they're really clicking the best offense in the league. Castle splits here at the line. And one thing Alex is early is this, this um, observing early is Castle is more aggressive. He's getting he's getting to the paint. They want him to be more aggressive attacking the paint, and this is a good sign for the freshman to get himself involved uh, offensively. High arcing attempt from Quincy Oliveri wouldn't go. Second chance here, Claude on the drive, and he locates Gitas Namishka. And again, Klingon closing out. The length, the size, the ability to affect those shots. Spot up three wouldn't go. The rebound, 
Kuzma. Here's Claude on the drive, and Xavier still without a basket to begin the game. Well, Xavier wants to play fast. They want to play it with pace, and so far they haven't been able to get a clean look, but when they can get an up-tempo kind of game, it favors their style of play. They're one of the best transition teams in the Big East. So far, a little bit out of sorts. Flinging back into the low post, swings it back out, Cam Spencer. Eight on the timer, it's Castle lining up a three. And it's a 10-0 start for Utah. Well, Castle looks like a different player. He's come out aggressive, he's looking for his shot, and that's a good sign for Danny Hurley and the Yukon Huskies. This place is loud, man. Davion McKnight silences the crowd with a three. Boy, did they need that. And McKnight quiets the crowd, settles his team down, Leads the Big East in assist to turnover ratio. Just a big time combo guard that can make shots, and he's going to have to be an important piece of his offense along with Claude in the back row. 20 points against Creighton for McKnight. Newton on the blow by Matt with resistance, and it rolls off the rim. And Miksha getting a piece. McKnight the other way. Transition pull up, no. UConn kind of looking to push off the pace, off, off the miss. Carabin against Claude, and that's in and out. Boy, if UConn had hit a couple of more layups here, this is probably be like a 15-point margin. McKnight, no. And Usman. Maybe you're not crashing the glass because they don't want to get beaten transition. Well, as a result, a lot of one-and-done trips, and UConn with a big lead early. Well, Donovan Klingon making his impact early and often. Of cancer-related causes. He wanted to add that splash of yellow here today as a part of that. Well, that's a great way to pay tribute to so many people that have been affected by cancer. And everyone, in some way or fashion, either directly or indirectly, knows someone that has been affected by that terrible disease. They, they had a moving moment prior to the game where they, they, the PA asked, you know, raise up your flashlight if you are battling cancer, if you've survived. As Cam Spencer skips one off the rim. Caravan pulls down an offensive rebound. And when they said, how many of you know somebody affected? And the entire building seemed to raise their flashlight. This drops for Newton. And UConn continuing to have their way on the offensive end. And UConn continuing to attack the paint. They've taken very few jump shots. They're getting angles. They're getting good post-ups. And they're attacking. First touch for Trey Green celebrating his 20th birthday today. The freshman wearing zero for Xavier. And a reach-in foul for Samson Johnson against Usman. Well, this Xavier team is a young team. You know, they've got 10 newcomers, six of them freshmen. And when you have a young team, Sean Miller told us that you have to really hope you can get some improvement and get some bench production. And you know, they got three core guys in Claude, um, Oliveri, and, and, and McKnight. But those three can't carry the full load. And so far, they've gotten off to a rough start. A lot of it has to do with UConn's pressure defense, not getting beat off the dribble, and everything's been contested. Misha, senior, who by all accounts is almost like a freshman, transferred after playing college basketball in his native Lithuania, but only had senior eligibility here. Here's Karabin. And he knocks down a three. And it's a 15-3 lead. I mean, it's got to be... Really frustrated for Sean Miller because defensively uh, they, threw, they threw up a, a three-quarter press to kind of change things up. McKnight somehow gets that to go. A nice balance by McKnight. He's a good player. He's a guy that, you know, takes care of the ball but can also create off the dribble. And the thing about UConn is they don't just shoot threes in the half court. They shoot them in transition. And Caravan is a big-time three-point shooter. At 6'8", no problem shooting over smaller guys, and you know, Caravan is 40% for three, which is pretty darn good. Meanwhile, right off the inbound, this will go the other way, an offensive foul against Xavier. And that's got a report defense. They know that Claw wants to drive hard. He's a hard driver, prefers to take it to the rim rather than shoot jump shots. Newton knew that, beat him to the spot, and drew the charge. 
quad back in uh, his native state from New Haven, Connecticut. Sophomore. Caravan straight away. No. And the rebound for Sasa Chani. Another one of those freshmen from Slovenia. McKnight in the lane. Pickpocket. And here come the Huskies with numbers. Solo ball for Caravan. Extra pass, Newton. Yes. And right now, they're putting on an offensive clinic. The ball is hopping. They're playing with pace. And they're getting clean, open shots. Deflection stays with Xavier. Last time that UConn played Xavier, the Huskies had 27 assists. That still stands as a season high. Well, they're a phenomenal offensive team, and they're doing it on the defensive end. Their defense is leading into great offense, and then they're moving the ball with pace. And then they've got guys that just step up and make big shots. Newton, Caravan, and Spencer is as good a backcourt as you'll see in the country. Oh, a jumper is pure. Yeah, he can do that. He's very good off the bounce. He's got good body control, and, you know, he's an athletic, strong guard. He's really a point guard that's more of a sc scoring guard in this role with the Xavier team, and good-looking shot right there for the sophomore. He's been able to start games well. The question is finishing. His numbers, Al Miller pointed out to us, it's a clear line of demarcation, first half to second half. He wants him to be more consistent. Two to shoot. Solo ball launches from Brad. Packs it in with a hand in his face. I mean, you can't guard better than that. That was actually, I was going to say this before Ball made the shot. And this is Xavier's best defensive possession of the game so far. And Ball banks it in. A steal from Diara. Hassan Diara into the front court. Came up empty with the transition defense from Green. UConn is just locked in. They're getting back on transition. They knew that they had to get back because Xavier wants to play with pace. And they've been committed to making everything tough for Xavier, building a wall, and contesting every shot. Look out. Caravan. Huskies, who started the day four for seven from three. Entry pass to Miksha. It's knocked away. They're going to call it over the back. Solo ball. His minutes have dropped dramatically over the last month or last game on Tuesday against Creighton. The Huskies have just... Well, some of those turnovers are because of the big guy clinging down yes, low. fair. Guys, literally, you drive into the paint, you see clinging who's 7'2", 280, they say, oh, no, I can't go down there. <laughs> and it just causes so much disruption, whether it's a block shot, an alter shot, or a deflection. It caused a lot of hurried looks for Xavier in the early going. You know, they want to play fast, but <laughs> they're playing out of control, too. Spencer tried to dump it down low, knocked out of bounds by Chani. He'll stay with UConn. You know, when I talked to the associate head coach, Kamani Young, at UConn yesterday and before the game, he said, look, we're trying to find another level to raise our team. And part of that is getting clinging back. The other part is Stefan Castle, the freshman, Super talented freshman wing guard And you got to be encouraged at the fact that he's come out today More offensive mind Green on the take And he tried to reverse it against Castle who stayed with him defensively Castle engages in the contact and he'll head to the line And spot on Castle has had three rim attacks already in this game a couple in transition we know about his hype coming out of high school, McDonald's All-American. But watch the body control and the mindset. You know, he wants to get to the paint, and he's going to the foul line for his third time already. That's a really big sign. Because I think this next month, Alex, for him, he's got to take his game to another level. And I think he's showing that. Well, that's where with any player in their first year, at this stage of the season, this is where you hit that wall. This is where it becomes a little bit different, where the, the guys who have been here three, four years, who have not only the experience, but the stamina to get through a Big East season, that is the difference. Yeah, and rem remember, he missed six games with a yep. D injury, yep. minor procedure. Came back, they brought him along slowly, and now he's rounded back into shape to where he was at the beginning of the year, where he was phenomenal. So... It's a good sign for the Huskies. It's a good sign for this young man. Four times he's been the conference player of the week. 
This week it actually snapped a string of three straight weeks. Where he had that on. He's matched up on Claude. He's a big time defender. He caused that steal right there. Well, this has been an impressive day. Oh my goodness! The vision from Castle to another true freshman in Jalen Stewart. The vision, the unselfishness, and Big East play. UConn leads the league in assists because they make the extra pass. And that's a, just a great job finding the open man. Xavier still in single digits. And we're past the midway point of the half. This has been a clinic on both ends by the Huskies. As Newton adds to the total and Sean Miller calls timeout. Pass by Xavier. They're not even crashing the glass because they're worried about getting beat in transition. Eight assists already on ten made field goals for the Huskies. Let's see if they can get something for Claude. Another deflection. McKnight. And they call a foul away from the ball. The thing you worry about with Xavier is their paint attacks and Claude and McKnight and Oliveri who we haven't talked much about he's been invisible but they're chasing him off every screen and not giving him any airspace Christian Newton has been the guy on him matched up spot up three off the heel of the rim pops right back to Claude but he couldn't get it and now Newton in transition I mean, how do you... raining outside and it's raining inside yeah how do you guard that I mean those are shots that, you know, you got to be so committed to get back in transition and guard the three-point line. Very, very difficult when you have weapons like that on the offensive end. Yeah, this right there running Xavier out of the building. Oh, no. Oh, no. They did not just do that. Newton to Castle. So much for a sleepy Sunday in Hartford. I mean, this is a clinic we're watching. And this crowd is loving it. The number one team in the country and playing as good as any team in the country looking prime for a repeat. The unselfish, watch this play. Beautiful pass. And not a lot of guys can make that play, but the athleticism and the just the explosiveness of Stefan Castle, who's playing great. Does not look like a freshman at all. Castle committing the foul. Thirty-one to seven. Claw it off the ball. Castle that passes a little bit too tall. It's off his hands and back to Xavier and mercifully for the Musketeers. We reach the under eight timeout. Well, if you want to see Ali Oop action, watch this right here. Will on track to be lower than that here. And when we talked to Sean Miller, what did he tell us? He said, I'm most concerned about transition defense and being able to rebound the ball. And both of those are where UConn has been dominant in this first half. Another great challenge. And it's that, look, Klingon, I mean, he changes the whole game for UConn because now the wings can get out and pressure they can pressure the ball they can get out in the passing lanes because they know they had that anchor down low by the rim great challenge there by the big man second block for Klingon already right. looking for a target only five seconds Double digits here. And they're now over their last seven for the field. Well, Castle's size and his length has bothered Claude. And Claude usually has his way getting to the basket, but it has trouble against bigger, longer, athletic wings, guards. Stefan Castle certainly fits that mold. Now on this end, pick your poison. The lob and the finish for Clinton. It's a great read. And they try to chase Pinscher off the screen. And instead of forcing this, Spencer just gets right into the paint, 
draws the defender in and easy lob pass. 18-2 run for UConn. Three ball way off from the freshman Dalen Swain. Off his first career start on Tuesday. Swing it. Drop step. Puts it in. And the foul. Well, you know, UConn is getting everything they want. And Klingon has been phenomenal in this first half. And just watch here. Great penetration. And Klingon's got great hands. And then here he just gets a great angle. That drop step when he gets behind the defense of Usman. It's over. It's just too easy. So here's the thing. You know this as well as I do. This league does not see a lot of blowouts. There is competitive yeah. basketball every single day. This is a shock. Well, it, I, it is. I mean, it, it's it's really impressive yeah. on all fronts to see UConn clicking like this. And again, this is what a lot of people kind of have hoped to see with Klingon coming back. And I'm not saying he's the only reason, but he just completes them. And now they have their full team back in defensively. They're a much better team. They're fully healthy for the first time in quite some time. The ball pressure has been phenomenal, and they've done it without fouling. Pull up for Claude with the shot clock expiring, and that lid has been pretty much sealed. They're making Claude play in the crowd, and they're using length on him, and that's been a problem. Even though that was a good look, Samson Johnson with a great contest. Xavier team that averages close to 77 points a game. They have just been house class from the castle. Castle this time. And again, Castle has been aggressive. He gets an angle and at 6 6. And the talent he brings, he has been a different player in terms of scoring the ball in his first half. Knight, take. Guarded by Castle the whole way. Well, a tough look for McKnight at the line. Yeah, McKnight is a physical guard who likes contact, but Castle, again, has been really good. And he's been able to attack off the bounce and use his length and athleticism to get to the rim. And that's when he's at his best. Second foul for Castle. Huskies coming in at 7 and 1 with a cushion top the Big East standings. Xavier didn't even have a chance to really get into you know the significance of this game and of this stretch. They had their bye week rather early in their schedule. They've had a really challenging schedule to begin with. They have the seventh highest strength of schedule in the country, but they need one or two more quality wins. Yeah, I mean, there's no question their non-conference schedule is, is a monster. They beat, I'm sorry, they, they played at Purdue. They played Houston. Played Purdue really tough. Yes. They have a couple losses like that back at home to Oakland, Delaware. Newton launches a three, comes up short. Johnson and over the back. Meanwhile, for the Huskies, last Big East regular season title was 2006. Obviously, they weren't in this league after the whole realignment thing. Yeah, and that's if you didn't. I mean, you wouldn't know that based on their success, and it also speaks to how great the Big East Conference is and, and you know how many good teams and good coaches there are and players so you know this league this year I'd say UConn is clearly the best team in the league and they're going to get everyone's best shot because of how good they are and the prestige that they bring to the program Yara takes the bump ends up misfiring and McKnight in transition brings it up for Xavier well, every inside the meet show. Sorry, Trey. no, everything is crowded for Xavier. There's no spacing, and that's a lot has to do with UConn. They're corralling the ball handlers into help and not giving them space, and they're going under every screen on Claude because they know he wants to get to the rim. And I think the length has really bothered 
Xavier as a whole. And other than the McKnight, no one has really even shown a glimpse of getting going offensively. UConn ranked number one in the nation, very much playing like it. They played with a target on their back all year as the defending national champions, but they, they yes. seem to have handled that pressure rather well. And I think a lot of that has to do with the experience. You know, Tristan Newton, you know, Donovan Klingon, Alex Caravan, three core guys that were part of a national championship team. Then you bring an experienced guy like Cam Spencer, who's older, more, you know, he's been around. And then some really talented freshmen, you know, and also Samson Johnson, an older player who's played great with Sam, with Donovan Klingon being out. He's playing great basketball. So you got a complete team in a nine-man rotation. Block here from Johnny. McKnight knocks down Diara, and it's an offensive foul. This great hustle by Diara, sprinted back in transition and threw that charge. And Dan Hurley sprints over to... Listen, this is a blue blood program. People forget that. This is one of the most dominant college basketball programs in the history of, of college basketball. And, you know, one in five national championships is incredible. Well, for a long while, there, there was a broader, I don't know if a, a debate was the right word, but question of whether you, you counted UConn as a blue blood. Uh, there is no dispute now. None. Not at all. Oliver. Yeah, nicely done off the shot fake to finally get Xavier in a double figure. And I think that's the first time he's even seen a clean look. I mean, UConn has been laser focused on making him uncomfortable chasing him off the screens. He's a big time three point shooter, but has been quiet other than that first shot. 16 straight games, double figures. Love to Johnson. And another alley oop. And that's the set play, a little misdirection, weave action. And then on a reversal, they get a beautiful lob to Johnson, who's probably the best lob catcher on this UConn team. Right back to pressure in the basketball. Danny Hurley said no drop off in intensity defensively. They have gotten that message. McKnight throws around the screen and lays it in. He's a good player. Nice move. And McKnight really been the only guy that's got some kind of success at scoring the ball. And nice job attacking the basket. Solo ball. It's a three. Another time the freshman played some big games early on in the season and a valuable part of that rotation. Not afraid. They want him aggressive to attack. He's playing for a job, seemingly, with playing time as Oliveri gets another look here. Solo boy, guy that kind of pushed out of the rotation with, with the depth that they have. And it wasn't anything he did wrong. Yeah. It's just there's, there's such a complete team. And, you know, he had some moments early on in the year where he played some big games at the Garden. He had a couple big games. And Spencer again. Uh, everybody on this team brings a specific role. Well, <laughs> we're going to trade threes here. I hope you have the over today. <laughs> Oliveri is a 44% three-point shooter. The best three-point shooter in the Big East. Big time scorer, and I'm sure in this upcoming timeout, Danny Hurley is going to talk about that. Well, a very quickly up to eight points after being held quiet to begin the game. At any given game, it could be one of six or seven guys that could be leading them to scoring, and they don't care about that. They just care about winning and playing the right way. Arabat checks back in, along with Klingon. Spencer, the Rutgers transfer. You know, they were talking about part of the reason why they brought him in is they wanted a guy who had not been to the NCAA tournament before. Somebody who was really hungry to get there, get that taste of the tourney. And Spencer fits that mold. Well, they definitely got the right guy because he is hell-bent on getting to the tournament and having a deep run. McKnight a three, and he knocks it down, and all of a sudden... The seal is broken seemingly for Xavier. Late in the half. With a nice step back to create space and knock down another long ball. 
the problem for Xavier has been on this side of the court. Defensively, they have not been able to stop anything that the Huskies have run. Xavier's hit their last five shots. Huskies have hit their last four. We call a moving screen here on Klingon. Going up on the Jeep halftime. We'll take a look at the first half stats from this. Try to make sense of it. And we'll look ahead to Tuesday's triple header on FS1. We're getting to that point, Alex. And, you know, as, today's the last day in January, right? Well, we're close to February. This last month of the full month of the Big East is going to tell us a lot about postseason and just the whole shakeup of the conference in terms of top to bottom. This is another nice deflection. Immediately, look at all the white jerseys helping up their teammate. That's just great. It's a great program. I mean, they do it. They do everything together. They're connected. And they don't take any plays off. Xavier's hit five straight shots, trying to get one more before the end of the half. This will count, but it rims in and out. And it ends a half that was a rout in favor of UConn. The Huskies shooting 61% from the field, holding Xavier to loss, bleeding into the other. They, they played a strong game against Creighton on Tuesday. Xavier led one on into the first 10 minutes of the second half before the Blue Jays went on a late 14-4 run to take the lead for good. There were a couple guys in foul trouble, but they, they're just, they're worried about could this team hit the skids a little bit if they face some adversity. Claude rejected to begin the half. Second effort puts it off the glass. Well, Claude's got to get himself going. It's easier said than done because Castle's done a really good job with that matchup. But, you know, he's had trouble, as we talked about, Alex, in the second half of sustaining that aggressiveness and being, being efficient. UConn has mentioned only one player in double figures in the first half. It was Tristan Newton. As he lobs to Klingon, getting grabbed before going up, and we'll call the foul before the shot. One of the things that UConn does so well in their offense is they screen with the motion and the cutting. They're looking for mismatches, and Klingon got a mismatch there where he had the size advantage and was able to draw that foul. Here's Castle on the out-of-bound under, and he draws a foul. Castle picking up where he left off in the first half. I thought he was excellent in the first half with his aggressiveness. And, you know, you think about UConn going into this last month or a month and a half. I think in order for them to take that next step, this young man right here has to be in the mindset he's been today. And that's aggressive, attacking. You know the talent. He guards one through four. He's a great passer, but he can also score the ball, and we're seeing that from him today consistently. Preseason freshman of the year in the Big East. All the expectations heaped on his shoulders to fill some of the voids after last year's national championship team. A couple of players that moved on. Saw his dad last night, Stacy Castle, great player. From New York, we uh, we went to the same high school, Oak Hill Academy in Virginia, and he played at Wake Forest. Great player, and very more importantly, he's a great dad, and he's 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 taught Stefan Castle how to be a really humble, respectful young man, and you can see where he got that from. Great example he led. Comes there with uh, Jordan Hawkins, many alumni in attendance regularly now. Going up here is Usman, and he gets hit. Klingon with the foul. Usman is one of their older players, and he's he's a monster on the offensive glass. He leads the Big East in offensive rebounding at about three a game. It's been quiet today, but a lot of that has to do with Klingon. And they don't run a lot of stuff for him, but he's a guy that can finish strong around the basket. And certainly, as I mentioned, on the offensive glass is where he does most, most of his work. Guzman from Brooklyn, New York. Transferred in from North Texas to Xavier this season. 
of under the radar is the reconstruction they had to do on this roster. As you mentioned earlier, ten newcomers in all this year. Six freshmen, four transfers. Usman comes up empty with the two at the line. And all ten of those newcomers have played at least one game. They, Xavier's season was impacted big time by some preseason injuries. Jerome Hunter still hasn't been medically cleared. And Zach Fremantle, foot surgery in September. And you presume they're going to shut him down the rest of the year, given that extra year eligibility. But that was essentially their starting front court. Yeah. That's now, you know, gone for the whole season. Castle, well defended, saved, but with the shot clock expired. I think that hit the rim, though. I think that hit the rim. They need to they need to look at that. I don't know if they will, but the castle shot looked like it grazed the rim. And the shot clock should have reset. Early with a bit of a protest, but on a relative scale, not that big. Uzman needs some help. Oh, pocket pass looking back for him. The back door cut. With McKnight locating Usman. Well, Usman rolled off the screen and Klingon kind of lost him for a second. And you know, Xavier seems to be a little bit sharper in the second half offensively. Newton, a three. The space created from the Klingon screen. Uh, he's a great screener. I call that a screen assist and a great job by Newton with the catch and shoot. Clinging with another board here. Newton gets another pick from Clinging. Swing it back out to Spencer. Newton. That's a pro move right there. The footwork and the ability to use his size at 6'5 is why he is the best point guard in my opinion, in the conference. Call foul here on Usman, it looks like. Watch Klingon right here in that previous play. And, you know, Tristan Newton made the shot. But Klingon is the reason he got open. Creating that space and, you know, McKnight tried to go under the screen and that gave Newton just plenty of space to get the shot off. Usman getting cheers from the UConn student section. Frustrating day for this Xavier team. Looking for back-to-back -back tournament appearances. The return of Sean Miller. Second stint at Xavier. That's just great execution and a great cut by Newton who got back door and that unselfishness comes out again. And McKnight got himself up in the air with a little indecision. Newton to three. Short Spencer pops the rebound up. Clinton will bring it down. Zip pass inside a bit too hot to handle for Caravan. Two-man game between Klingon and Newton has been a recipe for success. And these two guys play off of each other so beautifully. Watch the back screen by Caravan and a nice cut. That's a design play, but Klingon, very good passer for his size. Newton now up to 19. Klingon, and that's just where he gets his lunch money. Yep, and he's just too big and his footwork and the ability to catch and turn. At 7 2, there's nobody even close to his size unless they double team him. 9 0 run. Foul called here. You're always concerned with a big man when he encounters any sort of foot injury, right? Yeah. And so they wanted to be careful with bringing Klingon back. And you mentioned earlier to me that you know, all the weight that he lost actually may be a net positive in, in that way, right? Yeah, well, you know, he lost 15 to 20 pounds in his last few weeks by working with the strength and conditioning coach and just improving his diet. You don't see that too often mid-season, but he's been able to get even in better shape, and he does not look tired of today. He's very, very sharp in keeping his wins. Xavier's just standing. Microcosm of the day. Brown saying shoot it. Kling is not going to shoot a three. 
He's got three here. on the season. Up to that! Why not? It's a party in Hartford today. We're going to call a travel here on Newton. I just said Kling is not going to shoot it. He must have heard me. And this crowd is loving it. He squares it up. Uh, how strong the UConn fan base is and, and how supportive they are uh, of, the, of both the men and women's program. And I think that's a, a true source of it. And once, once, you, once you build, it, 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 it starts to take a force of itself. You know, a coach started off with three. You know, Kevin came in and got one. And... Uh, uh, Dan is, is continuing, you know, got one and looking very strong for another one. Yeah, I thought it was great. When you when you spoke at halftime, you spoke about how close you guys are, even still to this day. When you win a national championship, I mean, that's a, a lifelong memory. And the fact that you guys are still tight today, that's got to be pretty cool for you to have all your, your, all your guys back today. You guys went out to dinner last night. Uh, What's that been like for you guys? It, it's... it's it's been pretty cool. You know, for the most part, we've done a, a pretty decent job of staying in touch. Uh, we all have each other's numbers, and we've, we've seen each other segmentally throughout the years. This is the first time that, as a group, the whole team, the championship team, has been back together as a unit. And it was just fun strolling down uh, memory lane, uh, reliving old stories, really getting solidified also, too, where everybody's at now in life about all our kids and yeah. wives and see how everybody's matured and and grown and and, and how you know our, our paths have uh, matured i have a question for you about this current team and, and, and your relationship or do you have a relationship with any of these young guys like a guy like donovan kling and have you had a chance to maybe speak to him off the court or just learn about his journey or share anything about your path or is there any kind of bonding with the with the young guys so, so last year yeah, i got to know donovan uh, a little bit you know I, 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 uh, I attended quite a few games last year and it was actually uh there right before the season got to address the team and i've always made myself available this, this crew um dan does a really good job of recruiting just number one just great guys you know these guys are just really sweet kids uh, they're humble. They're, they they want to work hard as well as they're talented. Yeah. Um, and it's made it very easy to establish bonds and relationships. And with Donald, it's kind of they, they don't really need much. Right. You know, they, they don't need much guidance. You know, coach is, is a great coach. He pushes them and, and, and knows how to extract. And you know, all players, we're, we're all resources when they need it, if, if available. I mean, if necessary. Yeah. It's interesting too. And it, it, one thing to to be a successful program. It's another. It's another to win. But UConn seems like they've done a really good job in bringing back their alumni mm -hmm. and bringing them to games and having them involved. Mm -hmm. Is that the sense that you get? You know, in talking with other, you know, other some other NBA NBA uh, uh, counterparts and trading college experiences, I, I soon found out pretty quickly how rare my particular college experience uh, was not only in just the closeness that we share with the bonds of the teammate but just just the willingness of guys wanting to come back and again i put that a lot of it on the fans like the fans here just love they love you whether you win or not they remember you forever you know you, you wear that husky and, and you're bonded for life and you know fans here they just cherish and hold you. I, I really put a lot of stock in, in, in that and I think that's a, a big reason uh, why the, the tradition here is so strong coach Calhoun I, I'm sure you've got a, a story or two here from that year is there is there any moment that stands out from that season uh, <laughs> well, well, I was either yeah, from a teammate, yeah, you, you know, yeah, or, or, or even, or even, what, well, what was he like to play for? Yeah, and, and, and as a piggyback to Alex's yeah, question, you know, what was he like to play for? Coach, you know, coach, he's a tough dude. You yeah. know, he, he, like, coach had a real eye for talent in various forms and various stages of development. Um, and the the the, the common theme, the, the common theme in all his players was toughness. You know, so when you stepped out, when you stepped onto the court, you look to the left, you look to the right. It might be a completely different personality, but you knew that you guys shared the same common ground of just toughness. And you know, the the, the life lessons that we learn and you know, just 
going through practice and, and going through the gauntlet and going really helped us a lot. It, it, it just for me as a pro, like he really set the stage and allowed me to, to flourish from the from the pro level because I, I was just so well conditioned and just ready for that next level. Well, they continue to show the uh, the love and admiration here in, in Connecticut for your team, but you know, this program overall it it's a lot of fun to see you, know, you and Ben you know, this whole group back yeah, I, I didn't realize it was the first time you guys as a, as a full group had been back together uh, I, I'd assume that you guys are gonna try to, to make it for like a 30-year reunion or something like that <laughs> next time you have a chance over here definitely you know it's, it's it was really 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 cool and fun to get the guys back you know we all just sat out sat around last night and hung out at dinner and just traded stories and it, it, it was like no time to pass. You know, we we're all a little older, but uh, the connection was still strong. The, the jokes, the jokes flowed. You know, <laughs> m m most directed towards me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, hey, it, it was a, it was a good time. Well, you guys, I I'll tell you this. You know, you guys have represented the Big East in the best way possible. And I mean, to have UConn represent the Big East as a five-time national champ is just awesome. And I appreciate what you guys have done as leaders at the forefront and are continuing to do it now with this team now. I mean, I think this team, I want to ask you this. Exactly. Are they good enough to repeat? I definitely think so. You know, and, and the interesting thing, you know, I, I, you know, to me it was apparent from the first game. Yeah. You know, when I saw the first game, I'm like, oh, wow, they're just continuing from last year. You know, it was the same, just drive, same hunger, same execute. It, it just looked very, very rem reminiscent of uh, how it went last year. So the way it's going so far, I'm, I'm not at all surprised. You know, this number one ranking, yeah. uh, they're just, I mean, you got to see the score now. It was almost a 40-point. <laughs> Remarkable. Yeah. It's just, and, and, and they make it look so easy, you know, and again, these are all just great, great guys. Yeah. You know, very, very sweet kids, and um, it's a pleasure to be around, a pleasure to watch, and a pleasure to root for. Well, UConn's about to empty the bench here uh, as a foul is called inside. That guy, it was a pleasure. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 For sure. UConn celebrating the 20th anniversary of being all American. Dan Hurley, uh, the way he described it, he says he's a throwback. You know, when he came back against Creighton, they obviously had him on a minutes restriction. But Donovan said, yeah, I really want to go up against Kalkbrenner. I, I just really want yeah. to go up and see what I got against him. And uh, well, that competitive fire shows through. And he's going to be a force in March. I mean, he's, I, I think Danny is probably very, very happy with the outcome of Klingon coming back, starting, playing significant minutes, and playing at such a high level. And him healthy is just a, a real, real big advantage for this team. Chance for uh, Jaden Ross and a couple other freshmen to get into the game. Haven't been a lot of opportunities uh, for the Huskies to empty their bench, their other personnel, some game action. Oh, uh, Jaden Ross, another one of his talented freshmen for this UConn team. He's a dead-eye shooter. He's got a beautiful stroke. And it's just a matter of him being patient and waiting his turn. But these are still valuable minutes, and Danny can see some different rotations. This is a very young lineup in the freshman. Ross. Stewart. We'll get and throw ball in there as well. Four of them. Yep, four freshmen on the court now, and Samson Johnson, the elder statesman. By the way, kind of under the radar here. I, we talked about all those alley oops, you know, the the defense leading to transition baskets. They have 12 threes in this game. That is one off a season of high for the Huskies. That's kind of got lost, right? Yeah. I mean, they they've been so dominant at getting into the paint in transition that we haven't talked much about that but you're right they've done it all from an offensive standpoint and again Stefan Castle I don't want to call this a breakout game because it's not but it's a big step for him and his team that he's played this well and he started out in attack mode and has carried it over in the second half
And that may that may be the key thing is just how he began the game. While Xavier, a couple of uh, bench players get in action as well. Kashi Enzim, freshman wearing 15. Lazar Djokovic wearing 17. Djokovic more of a regular. And Xavier team that just looked out of sorts from the get-go and overwhelmed. Foul on the Huskies. So go against Johnson. Now the rest of the Big East, uh, they're playing catch-up to this UConn team. Right now, projected six teams in the tournament. Xavier, boy, if they could just pick up a, a quality win here or there, they probably join a group with being at the very least on the bubble, but really haven't been able to put together just that one signature win as of yet. Well, one of the benefits of being in such a deep, talented league of the Big East is you're going to get more opportunities. Yeah. And you're right. They've got to win some of these games. It's certainly hard to win on the road, especially in Hartford at the XL Center. But they have some time, not a lot of time, but they've got to, they've got to tighten things up. And this game is going to force them to kind of reevaluate how they want to approach the rest of the season and transition defense, rebounding, toughness are some of the things that they stand out today that they have not been able to accomplish. We're going to a zone here, Xavier. A little one, two, two. He's trying to slow down this UConn offense. Castle duck under. Season Xavier with 27 wins finished 13th in the final AP poll. It was a five year high in wins, and they came in with similar expectations. But we talked about the injuries to their front court really doused a lot of the uh, preseason thought of where they could finish. Yeah, Sean Miller's a great coach. I mean, his first year back in his second stint, they immediately went to the Sweet 16. And this is after a long drought of. Limited postseason success for the X-Men, but it's four years, which is I mean, considering the recent standard for the last couple of decades for this program, that is a long drought. And you know, this is a team that is still in flux. I mean, yep. they've, they've had a lot of adversity, and they've had an influx of young youth, a lot of youth that's still learning how to play on the Big East level. And one three of four Xavier coming into the day. Let's see Oliveri. Quiet start. And he picked up the scoring pace as the afternoon has gone along, but it will be in vain. I, I think we're beyond the point, too, of, of win or lose because they have a couple of games now. It's just like, okay, you, we could get to the Super Bowl here today, right? Yeah. Don't let that chance pass up. Yeah, I get that the 49ers are the, are the favorite. Yeah. But I'm rooting for Detroit. Yeah. A lot of people would agree with you. Well, that's the 14th three of the afternoon for UConn. Jalen Stewart knocks one down. That's now a season high for the Huskies. Might crack the century mark here this afternoon. Xavier will have to go back to the drawing board. Nice play. Nice pass from Green to Shawnee. You know, when we talked to Sean Miller before the game, he said, you know, for us to be in the top tier of the league, we, we've got to get a boost from our freshmen. And that's, you know, Trey Green and um, Swain being the two main guys and, and then Djokovic. And then they also got to, they've got to figure out what they're going to do with their four, four man. And, you know, Swain has been that guy who started his second game today. Not a great game for him. But those are the two things that they're trying to get something consistent production-wise. And those are, you know, those are parts of the pieces that, that can help you win some of these games as you get in, a, in a deeper in the conference play. Well, especially with Swain, they really thought that that breakout game against Providence. He had 23 points. Oh, hard collision there. Djokovic came together with Jaden Ross, and Djokovic is down. Freshman from Serbia. 
adversity from losing Hopkins and kind of rallied around that the last little while. And they had agree. a couple of tough losses lately before that. Well, they got five league wins now, and, yeah. and people, people pretty much wrote them off when Bryce Hopkins got hurt. But they're a feisty team. They they, they guard, and you know, Devin Carter is as good a, a player in the country for the guard spot, especially on the defensive end. Carter's led the Big East in scoring since mid-December. Foul here is called. Another look at the Big East standings and kind of where everything sits here. UConn has a cushion atop the league. Providence mid-pack. Boy, I, you can't bet against them right now. No, I mean, they're they're for real. And even though they don't have Bryce Hopkins, they've got Odoro, who's a big guy who can step out and score the ball. And then Carter and, 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 and Ticket Gaines, who's a big-time three-point shooter. They've got some pieces there. They've got an excellent young coach at Kim English who has got his own way of creating a, a, a winning identity in his first year there. So I, I, I'm excited about this next few weeks. And certainly UConn stands out as the top team, but then you've got Marquette, yep. who's not going away. Yep. And Creighton certainly playing good basketball with Cal Brenner controlling the paint. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a fun run this last six, seven weeks. I was going to ask you about Marquette. Is that a team, and maybe even a coach, and Shaka Smart with what he's done with that program that, that doesn't really get enough attention nationally? Uh, you know, I, I think Shaka Smart, you know, what he did last year reminded everyone of how good a coach he is as Diara knocks down another three ball for the Huskies. I, I think people know how good Shaka is. I mean, and the Marquette team is an experienced team. They've got guys that had a lot of success last year. Tyler Kolick, Big East player of the year, and uh, Ogo Isidaro, and, you know, they've got some really good, experienced guys, so I think they're going to be there at the end. Johnson fighting through the contact here, and, and, you know, transition points for UConn have been at a high, high rate, and I've got the fast break points at 18, and I don't even think it included those last two. Think because they've been more consistent. You lose a guy like Jordan Hawkins, as we just saw on the camera, you know, Andre Jackson, Adama Sinogo. But you got Stefan Castle stepping right in. You got a more experienced Donovan Klingon. You got a, a senior point guard in Tristan Newton, and then Caravan, who's just a night knockdown shooter. But more than just that, he's a leader. So it's, it's hard to say, but I think this team is certainly good enough to repeat, and we're seeing that today, how they put everything together. Saw their uh, next game for UConn. We'll have it here on FS1 on Thursday. I beg your pardon, on uh, Wednesday night, it's going to be UConn and Providence. He's talking about that Friars team. Look at the uh, upcoming schedule here for the Huskies. Big one against St. John's at the Garden on Saturday. There's, there's been some words between yeah. Early and uh, Rick Pitino leading up to that one. Yeah, that's, that's building. It, that's been a build up there, and uh, that place, the Garden, will be full. It will be sold out. It will be the hottest ticket in New York, and certainly a lot of ex expectation for both programs. And remember, earlier this season, St. John's played UConn very tough. And if it wasn't for a couple offensive rebounds that UConn got at the end of the game, St. John's was going to win that game. So, you know, I think that's going to be, you, you don't want to skip any steps. St. John's has got Xavier on the road on Wednesday, and certainly UConn's got Providence. But that one on Saturday will be a monster matchup. Bustleus, Rumabu. And our bench players get the late looks here in the game as UConn approaches the century market. The, the interesting thing with that uh, little back and forth between Dan Hurley, Rick Pitino, last year Hurley declared unequivocally, we own Madison Square Garden. And year after year, when they play St. John's, UConn fans, they travel and they pack the house. I think last year, it was at that game, it was like 75% UConn fans. Rick Pitino then said, well, I, I want next year's game played at Carneseca Arena, so yeah. we, we don't have to deal with that. I, I'd be fascinated to see uh, what the crowd is like this coming Saturday. Well, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, UConn does travel well, and UConn has been heavily represented in the Garden, but Rick Pitino has changed everything at St. John's, and 
his pedigree, his ability to lead and get fans excited, you can start to see the signs of that, and they're certainly not afraid to go toe to toe with the Huskies. You saw there the reaction uh, from the bench for Moglu, one of their young players, he was on this team last year, a sophomore. Edzen and one. Freshman center did not appear for them on Tuesday. Now this is the kind of game, Alex, for, for the X-Men where you, know, you don't want to just flush it. You got to learn from it. But they are going to have to be tougher on the road and learn how to push through some adversity. And certainly UConn is the best team in the country. So it's easier said than done. But this has got to be a building block in a tough way for the Musketeers in a hostile environment. See there, Andrew Hurley coming off the bench. He had a three in the uh, opening game, and I think every time he touches the ball, I guess it gets a bit of an ovation. It's not easy being the coach's son. No. <laughs> but he is loved by his teammates, his staff, does whatever the team needs in practice. Bob Andrew on the stands. You know, I saw dad, Coach Hurley, and mom in the gym this morning. They said, look, we're, gonna, we're getting our pregame workout in. <laughs> How about that? Come on, Luke. The 6'8 sophomore from Greece looks real good. Knocked out of the hands of Stewart. This will go back to Xavier. Andrea Hurley on the right. And the, you see the buttons there. We talk about the coaches versus cancer initiative. And Andrea's been instrumental in creating those those superhero buttons, as she called them. Earlier this week, they uh, they asked fans, hey, submit some pictures, and, and we'll make the buttons for you. We'll donate proceeds to charity. Even if you didn't submit one earlier in the week, they made some on site here this morning, which was really nice if you brought a picture. So, really cool to see uh, everybody buying in to support that cause. There's Hurley. They want it. And they got one. And how cool is that? <laughs> the crowd is thrilled. UConn with a season high and program record 17 threes. And he hit that off the glass and looked real comfortable shooting it. He's not afraid to get some shots up. Uh, mom is thrilled. <laughs> On a day that you never know what to expect in this league. UConn shooting 58% from three. From the opening tip, they had a, a hustle and an attack mode about them. Time will dwindle down here at the XL Center in Hartford. They've already reached the century mark twice this season, UConn. Well, they will not make an attempt here, it appears, to make it a third time. Well, I mean, it's pretty clear, Alex, that this is the best team in the country and certainly you want to be the best team in the country in April not right now but they have shown why they're the number one team ranked and I think everyone is pretty clear on that that this team with Donovan Klingon in the lineup is dominant they may not dominate every game but they have all the pieces to go on another run
A fun afternoon for all the UConn fans here in Hartford. Xavier drops to 500. UConn improves to 18 and 2. And they remain firmly in control of the Big East. 99-56 the final. And the largest margin of victory in a Big East game since 2000.